is impossible. Your awareness and awareness is here. There hasn't been a moment in your life that you've been outside of the moment. Maybe in your imagination, you're imagining something, you want to be with someone or somewhere or whatever, you're fantasizing or you're worried about something, but it always happens here. The eternal now. And you are that. That's the good news. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I do have a um, I do have a dilemma. Okay. In what we do for a living on the first day and throughout the last nine days, you talk about securities and safety. How you know that that is the ultimate desire in most people is to obtain security and to be safe in life. We are in the business, my husband and I are in the business of offering investment products for retirement, life insurance, health insurance, and that is all related to stability, security on the what if, mm -hmm. right. which is opening awareness of, you know, worrying, oh no, what if you die too soon, you, you live too long, uh, what if you get sick and we sell on the peace of mind into the protecting our assets how do we go about continuing this you know concept of offering security and not worrying on the what if and still be able to help people not instigating fears and worries and live in the present moment. It, it's like a conflict to me in protecting themselves on the what if. Well, f number one is know that you're serving God. You're doing what Spirit wants you to do, absolutely. And you're, you're in this apparent world. You're in this phenomena that it's got its own sets of rules and laws. So, you're providing a service. So, you're insuring them. They're buying insurance from you to protect their assets. Whether it's life insurance, you're still protecting your assets. So you're providing something which is necessary in, in this lifestyle, in this world we're in. So I don't see anything wrong with it. I don't see like you're doing anything outside of ordinary that it's not ethical or, or holy. It's your idea maybe. But you are serving by helping him. Now let's say that a couple, a young couple, got married, they have two kids, husband is 45 years old, wife is 40 or 35, they have two children, they bought a house for let's say $700,000, she's taking care of the kids, that's her job, raising the kids, and he goes out there and provides and makes money. And they don't have life insurance. So they bought a house for $750,000. They got an expense of like $8,000 a month. And he has no life insurance, and he gets in a car accident, God, God forbid, and he dies. So what is she going to do? She can't go out there and make $8,000 while she's nursing two kids. Her skill is different. So now she's going to lose her home. And she's going to be on the street. So she needs to be protected. She does need that life insurance till everyone's on their feet or their mortgage is paid. 
and the kids are in college or they can take care of themselves. In that period of time, they need some kind of security. If something happens to one of the parents, the other one can, has to go on. So you're not doing anything wrong. You're providing a service which is needed. And if you create fear in them, you're certain, you're definitely bringing their attention to something they're not paying attention to. They're not aware of it. It's like I go buy a $100,000 car and I don't insure it. It's not very smart because it's exposed to all kinds of dangers every day. So I need to protect my investment. Okay? Yes. All right. You're welcome. You're welcome. This is what God wants you to do. And you're doing a good job, my sister. You go out there and protect them. Help them understand that they, they need that protection. Because this is the rules of this dimension. 100 years ago, 200 years ago was different. We lived tribal. We, had our, we lived in a village. It was a tribal lifestyle. The village will take care of the kids. There were grandparents, uncles, aunts, brothers, sisters. Everybody was living in a communal life. So if something happened to, to the husband, the rest of the clan were there and they were looking after the kids. They didn't have to mortgage their home. They built their home there and they ate, they lived off of the land. This is different times and requires different ways of living. So you're not doing anything wrong. You're serving. Okay. We got anyone else? Let me see. Let me look at the... Anybody? Okay, uh, Margie, I'm sorry if I, sometimes I feel like I don't pronounce your name correctly. You have to give me, tell me how to pronounce your name correctly one more time and I promise I pay attention. Okay, thank you. It's Marche. Marche. Okay, I'm going to do my best to... Well. Okay, Marche. Okay. Right. From Nederland. From Nederland? Right. right. Yes. Echt? Yes. Echt? Echt. Echt. Right. <laughs> 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 okay, Marche. <laughs> I'm all yours. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, referring to your own statements about the, the I, like the I life, Okay. Um, um, how do you come around in daily life? Because talking just in daily life, I, I like this, but then it, it gets my son. Right. I'm. What I'm saying is that it's it's a very powerful way of. If you're being attentive to this, I'm not saying that every moment in your life you're going to be saying, I like this, I like that, and then you're just doing this thing. There are moments, of course, you're just going to have to say, hey, you know, I don't like that food or I don't like that this thing. Or your friends say, okay, let's go to this movie. And I say, you know what? I don't like that actor. I don't want to go to that movie. So... You're not in your interaction with other people every moment. You're not doing this processing because then it's very uncomfortable. But in your private time, in, in your meditation, or even you, you are doing it on a regular basis. You're watching yourself. 